It's yeah. opening the uh, October 2nd uh, meeting of the Montpelier Roxbury Board of School Directors at 642. Uh, uh, so, first order of business is public comment. I just want to remind both people in the room and on the phone that, or on the Zoom, that we uh, are going to hear a presentation about. Uh, the future options for this building, and we're going to have public comment after that presentation. So, um, so this public comment, we can talk about that if you want to. You can talk about whatever you want, but um, we will be having a second uh, public comment discussion period after the presentation. So that might be uh, a better time to, to speak to uh, that very important issue. Um, public comment is uh, where we hear input from the public um, on whatever happens to be on the public's mind. Uh, and uh, we do not respond in real time, but it's very important for our decision-making process, for our education to know what people are concerned about, to know about uh, problems in the district. Uh, so while we don't respond in real time, I think that we are not uh, listening and um, you know, taking action either down the road or uh, to figure out um, you know, the, the, the problem that we uh, brought to our attention. Uh, so uh, any public comment for this round? Again, we're having public comment later. Um, yeah, we, uh, would now, can you give me an approximate time of how long it will take, and would it be more appropriate after the or the presentation on this building? Or... All right. Is it an hour? Given that Who's given an hour? Did they know that? Oh, uh, and, and we have given an hour for the second. Um, Okay, I'll, I'll put it up here that some people would have to turn their heads around to see it. And then I have the handout that I would have for everybody afterwards. Okay, so um, I have, I got it for Friday. And I have gone to several meetings in the community where people have offered many, many ideas of how to reduce the building. And so I sort of. So I just want to make sure that the audio is picking this up. Okay, that's very nice to you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. That's all right. All right. Is that better? Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. So I, I have attended several meetings of the community who um, all had ideas about how to use the building again. And some were very different, some were pretty similar. And I took from the last meeting, they had consolidated the number of ideas into about six or seven. So I looked at the layout of the building and um, assigned different activity groups from the community space in the building trying to bring the community together and create um, a program that is good for everybody. But one of the first things that I thought of from my own experience is that um, a child care, an early childhood program, which would serve three to five year olds and the existing classrooms in the North Wing had a license for 20 children in each when it was a public school and it had one connecting room. Um, 
what I would propose for that is that it still become it become an early childhood program. And I've connected with one early childhood program already who has expressed an interest in renting it. Um, and I've talked with several people who are connected with funding for early childhood programs. And they are really excited about the idea of this plus the other things that I put into the building. Um, the sec this would be the administration, which is the desk that everybody walks in the door to. Um, and then the town hall meeting space would, where you are now would be this, would still be the use for as, as a town meeting site. It could be a place where um, community dinners were held like Roxbury Roots to have an indoor place in the winter. And it could also become a place for special events that people want to rent for a birthday celebration or a, a company meeting time. And that would bring income into the room as well. Oh, yes. Um, and then we we'll go over here. Um, and this is the existing kitchen plus one of what used to be the nurse's office to make it bigger. And so you could have, you could prepare large meals in it and be able to um, deliver them to wherever you wanted them. Um, I had originally proposed this bigger build, room for the kitchen, but after talking with other people, they said, well, why don't we just expand this when it will cost less? Then the library is the other place that I suggest that we continue to use the library space and move the contents of the library over here. And then that space could become a site that the town rents for income. The library was lacking a, a room for computer work in its existing site or for meeting space. And so giving them one of the offices here for their computer room would be really helpful to them. Um, the next space, people in the community, particularly, particularly some of the many parents, said, well, I really would like to go to a gym, um, but, um, or to take, you know, yoga classes or um, something like that. So one of the rooms could be devoted to that. And it could also serve as a place for the early childhood program to use for a group activity. And the senior center that we have now in the community center, I would move over here um, so that we could empty out the existing community center and bring someone who wanted to rent it for another purpose. So for more income. And I would have a I would put on a screen porch and an ADA ramp down to the back driveway for that group. And the person that was interested in the child care program said, oh, I can't believe that you would also, we would also have seniors and we'd have the library in the building. She said she had been looking for a space like that and hadn't been able to find one. So you're bringing a lot of people together. Um, let's see if I got everything. And then by moving the kitchen, you are able to have one empty space, which could be for the after school kids or it could be rented for a retail shop. But I was thinking in the usage, who would use it? How easy would it be to get here? And um, also, um, you know, keep the income, keep a budget that works. And the um, kitchen, we would also want to include some kind of, somewhere in the building, we want to include a coffee shop because that's something that everybody in Roxbury said, we don't have a coffee shop. Could you please put a coffee shop in there? And because of our septic and 
our sewer and water here would meet the requirements for food service, where on the other side of the street, nothing does. Um, that would be a really good place to put it. So um, that's pretty much, this would still connect to the playground, which was fine for preschoolers. And I think, I think it would get a lot of use. And the feeling of the community would be very important to keep that you could come here and feel like you were a member of the town. So that's my, my statement on this. And I thought about it carefully and I put all my experience as a teacher, educator, and landscape designer um, translated into an interior space. But um, I think bringing all those things together, it's a big picture and it's pretty much planned out for you without having to do too much um, haggling over what to do or delaying it for a long time. Because this, this this group would love to come as soon as we can get it ready. So that's it. Um, and let me just... Stop. Oh, I thought I already was, but okay. So, um, is there any other public comment? in the room at this point. Again, we're going to have an hour for discussion after a, uh, a presentation. Uh, any on the phone? Right, so, so again, thank you everyone for coming. Um, me and I and Libby are going to kind of run through uh, where we've got to where it's been. Um, just for kind of reviewing the process, uh, pursuant to the merger agreement, um, you know, the, the agreement was that, that the district would run this building as the Roxbury Village School uh, for a period of at least four years. Uh, and if the district chose to um, no longer run it as Rockford Village School, uh, it would, after four years, it would first make a determination about whether or not the building, uh, there was an educational need for the building. And if the board determined that there was no longer an educational need for the building, uh, it would offer it back to the town for a dollar. And just kind of going back to the beginning, the town offered, the town, when the merger agreement happened, um, transferred the building to the district for a dollar. So it would basically be transferring it back. Um, the town could choose to take the, and there are some terms that were not well defined. Educational need was not well defined. As the board is proceeding, we are basically looking at whether there is an existing educational need um, for the building. That does not mean an educational want. It means something that uh, is fulfilling a current need of the district and, and something that also we could practically do uh, financially and, and otherwise. Um, the yeah, if the board determines there is not an educational need, we would offer it back to the town uh, for a dollar. Uh, if the town accepted that transfer, um, that as long as they used it for community use, again, a term that is not specifically defined, um, and that's something we would probably, during the negotiations of the transfer, uh, either define as part of that process or put some parameters around. Um, but I think it's a pretty broad term. Uh, and I, I'm hoping that, that it could be met. Um, and as long as, as, it, as it stays for community use for five years, um, the, the town basically just accepts it for a dollar. If the 
town were to change it from a community use to a private use, and I'm not sure exactly what that would entail, um, but it would probably be something like maybe selling it to a developer to turn it into condos or something of that nature uh, that didn't benefit the community. Um, the town would be liable to the district for the improvements made in the building during the time that the district was in possession of the building. Um, and again, I'm not sure what that amount is. My belief is it's somewhere in, on a in the 60 to 90,000 know, for these V pumps and solar improvements. Um, but again, I, I think if the town were to do something like that, you know, they would probably it would probably be for some sort of you know again private transfer where they they may be you know making money for the building. So that would be the, the town's choice. Um, you know, once the district transfers it to the town, uh, it's at the town's discretion to decide what to do with the building, and that would be a a select board and a town decision. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the the full authority of the select board is in terms of of both uh, making a decision about whether or not to accept the building uh, and then what to do with it. That's, you know, that's a question for the select board. Um, I do want to put out there that, uh, you know, for future use of the building, the district, I think, would be very open to discussions about, you know, a potential partnership uh, to some degree. Um, I don't want to make any promises, but I certainly think we would be open to a discussion to partnering in some way. Uh, you know, for the community use of the town, if that made sense to the town and the district. Uh, but again, once it would transfer to the town, it would then be the select board, um, it would be in the purview of the select board to make future decisions about the, the building. Um, so we, uh, just kind of going back quickly, uh, and Libby, do you want to share your screen so I can kind of go through these slides quickly? Uh, so the first step in this process uh, was, you know, just as part of the board's due diligence about educational use, we asked Libby to put together some uh, hypothetical uses for the school uh, that could potentially meet an educational need uh, with the idea that the board would consider these with public comment and see if any of these were an educational need uh, for the the uh, the school that we would, would want to pursue, uh, and there's a very good chance we may not want to pursue any of these. Um, there's a good chance we might want to pursue a couple of them. So, so, so the idea was to put this in front of us, and um, uh, yeah, so we could you know obviously you know make this consideration with uh, with some solid information. Uh, so I'll, I'll go through these pretty quickly, and if you have, uh, I guess it's worth doing the refresher, which I kind of did. Um, I just want to, you know, put out there because I think it's very relevant towards, uh, you know, how, you know, where the district is at. Uh, you know, the reason that the primary reason that we closed the school and did it on a time frame that I think made everyone uh, unhappy uh, was the uh, the budget situation that we faced not only last year, but that we appear to be facing for a few years to come, which, which has come from some statewide factors that have made education funding tighter, uh, and then some changes in the law. So uh, we, the board essentially made a decision after a failed budget vote uh, that in order to get the budget down to uh, a level uh, that would, would pass and be acceptable to the, the taxpayers of the district, um, that we would move students from RBS to uh, UES, uh, which we've done this year. Uh, this was about a $1.5 million uh, increase in uh, our overall budget. Um, I just want to make clear that you know we are not in necessarily a better situation this year in terms of, you know, we are, we are not really in a position where we can uh, invest a lot of money that we are going already committed. Um, so I just kind of want to be clear about that. Uh, you know, if we did, it would, would be a substantial tax increase. I think we got a pretty, pretty strong message last year that uh, taxes are already too high. 
Um, the current cost of upkeeping the building is substantially less than the 1.5 million. Uh, it costs about 60,000 uh, for uh, the building upkeep and about 85,000 for the enrichment program, which is currently going on of understanding is, is uh, uh, something that, that the town is, is happy about. Um, uh, so again, a significant decrease in current cost of the building. Uh, I also want to make clear that as long as the building is in the district's hands, uh, we are committed to maintaining it and upkeeping it and ensuring that the building stays in, in good shape uh, so that um, you know, either if the district finds a use for it, it's in great shape, or if it's passed to the town, or if the town does not want it to another potential buyer, um, that uh, you know, it's, it's, it's as solid as it is today. Um, so the options that we considered, uh, one was, and again, you know, just keep in mind the financial situation I just laid out. One was a magnet type school. Um, this was actually uh, considered a few years ago when we did a bilingual study uh, to see if the school could possibly be used uh, for a, a program that would start uh, students at kindergarten in uh, a world language and move that through, uh, you know, through middle school. Uh, that study found that, that for a variety of reasons, that was not a practical use. Uh, but obviously, a magnetic school has been something that you know other districts have done that has been thrown around. Um, it would be it would be quite costly though, uh, and. Um, yeah, and again, we did we did look at this building for a potential program a few years ago when, when we did have more financial uh, flexibility, uh, and at least that particular program was determined to uh, not be viable at this school um, or at this building. Uh, the second thing we looked at uh, was a, a regional BOCES. This is a relatively new law. Uh, I will probably not get it all right, but essentially it allows regions to kind of come together and create a, a school that serves uh, particular needs for uh, children who, who have uh, you know, special or, or um, you know, high, uh, high cost needs. Um, the idea was potentially using it as a place for student with, students with, um, with the student health needs that would make a separate building uh, a proper place for them and, and a, a safe place for them. Uh, Libby has has done, and we choose to get this in the updates. Um, this would require regional help. It would require you know other superintendents of other districts wanting to pull together resources and feeling that this is a proper location for. Um, that school would also have, um, you know, some potential uh, costs. Um, the next, the next use we considered was uh, renting the space to the career center, uh, the Central Vermont Career Center. Uh, we, it's been long known that they were looking for uh, for new space. Uh, Libby will have an update. She is she's reached out to the Central Vermont Career Center about whether this would be a viable space for them. Um, I'll have to give the update on that, but that was another one that was considered. Um, the next one was considered was moving central offices to this building. Um, we currently do have an office shortage. Uh, before we knew about our budget situation last year, uh, one of the needs that was identified. Uh, in kind of the, the pre-budget wish list of, of, uh, of desired additions, if, if we had the money to spend, uh, was renting space in Montpelier for the central office. Uh, you know, the benefits is that it would increase space at MHS and MSMS, which are the two buildings that are particularly kind of squeezed with space right now. Um, one of the biggest drawbacks is that it would remove most of our leadership, at least the, the central office leadership. Uh, it would take them you know, 30 or so minutes away from the buildings where they really have to do a lot of their work. 
uh, and where they can be in touch with with students. And it would also um, complicate the commutes of of several staff members in a way that that could potentially loss result in them looking for for other um, opportunities. Um, the final option uh, is is I think somewhat in line with what's currently happening now, but maybe building on it. Uh, and again, I think this is this 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 option uh, has a little more kind of flexibility to it. Would be using it as some sort of uh, community uh, center, um, you know, for uh, you know, for offering daycare for employees, um, increasing flexible pathway opportunities after school enrichment. Um, you know, this is probably the lowest cost option, and I'll editorialize here a little and say it's also probably the most viable option. Um, it would still have cost to the schools of probably about 200000 a year. Uh, it would also leave this building in the control of the district. So the town's ability to, to do other things with it, like co-locate offices, et cetera, uh, would probably uh, be either hard to do or, or potentially off the table. Um, and it would it would still, I think, service the community, but probably in a more limited way than some things the town could potentially uh, with the building. And then an option that's not on there, uh, but is is clearly there, is to determine that none of these uh, are educational needs of the district and to make that determination and to offer back to the town and work with the town to, to make the transfer happen. Uh, and I do want to say, and I'm, I'm probably getting a little ahead of the board, but I, I feel pretty confident in saying that we are, if, if that's the determination we make, uh, I think there's a very good chance that we will be willing to uh, take the time to do this in a, in a thorough way, uh, give the time town to, you know, to, to vet the issue, to, uh, you know, to look at options, to see whether it makes sense to the town. Uh, we would not be, I think, trying to rush the town into any decision, but really giving the time, the town time uh, to make the best decision uh, for the town on this building. Because because I think that neither the district nor the town really wants this building in, in hands other than the district's for, for the town's hands long term. Um, so in terms of like making the decision on whether or not any of these are, are viable, uh, at the last meeting, we set forth, uh, you know, three basic parameters. Um, one is consideration of financial implications. So you know, we are, as I, as I started this off with, we are in a, a, a pretty tight budget squeeze, and it's a budget squeeze that's really statewide. Um, so the ability to invest a lot in new ventures is extremely limited at, at the moment. So um, you know, making sure that there is financial, practical uh, realities that, that we are being cognizant of um, and that uh, you know, we're being respectful of our property, you know, property taxes and, and our taxpayers who uh, you know, are, I think are, are feeling a squeeze from, from many uh, directions. One is that it, it truly meets an unmet need of the school. You know, it's an educational need, not an educational want. Um, you know, so is this is this a need that we really have, and, and is it practically met by the use of this building? And then the third parameter is is what the the both the, the towns want. Um, and I think you know the desire of Roxbury, I think, is particularly uh, at top of mind for the board. Uh, because you know, this is a centerpiece of, of, of this community um, and it's obviously used by the community members and has the potential for use by the community members of Roxbury much more than Montpelier. So I think that uh, we want to hear from both communities, but we, we certainly want to hear from the Roxbury community. Um, and I will, anyone else, anything I missed? And I can turn it over to- no, I think that's a good recap, Jim. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any any 
questions? Was anything unclear? And then I'll turn it over to Libby. She's going to give some updates on the, the needs and then we'll open up for public comment. But um, just are there any any questions, anything that, that was unclear? Yes. Jim, I was just wondering if you could just go over one more time the uh, part about if the Roxbury takes the school back for Dallas and to keep it in community use for four years. But yep. uh, if the town changes the use during that four years, what is the, are you saying that it was part of the merger that um, requires the town to recuperate the district for maintenance of the building during the time that the it's it's not maintenance, it's just improvements. So money invested to improve the building. So the, the routine maintenance, no. So you know it's it's cost a certain amount for you know to keep the building and to you know to tend the lawns and you know do regular upkeep. So that that would not be reimbursed. It's simply you know, substantive improvements that, the, you know, upgrades that the tap that the district has, has made. And you're Again, saying that, that was out, that's outlined in the merger. That's outlined in the merger. Thank you. <coughs> yes. And you said community use was not clearly defined. The, are, is the board feeling that using it for town hall, you know, town, town meeting day, select board meetings, planning commission meetings? Community dinners, you know, this space. Yeah, I think is all that sufficient to. I think all use? of those are well within the definition of community use. I, I think so. It wouldn't require above and beyond. Yeah, I like you know our understanding as long as there's a, a kind of public purpose. It doesn't have to be all public. I mean, it could be potentially forty percent public, and you could have a couple. You could have a. a, a totally private coffee shop as well. So it wouldn't have to be all public use. They're just, you know, if you sold it to someone who wanted to rip it down and build a huge big mansion and lock the town out, probably probably not that, but but a lot of stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. I think as long as it, it remains some sort of, of community center and, and public area. Others? Uh, Libby, you want to? Sure, thanks, Jim. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say I'm, I'm happy to see so many Roxbury folks in the crowd, and I'm very sorry that I'm not there right now. I've had a conflict with a different board meeting that I just ran from right before this meeting, so I'm really sorry that I'm not there in person tonight. Um, I definitely wanted to be. So I uh, reached out for the board's directive to regional colleagues. Um, the first person I reached out to was Jody Emerson, who's the superintendent of our technical school, Central Vermont Career Center. Um, and she stated in an email that she can't see an immediate use for the school, but did say she could speak with her board regarding the matter. Um, since that conversation, I'm sure I, I have linked the Times Argus article in here around the CBC um, conversation that the board of directors are having around a new site for the Career Center. Um, and she was asked and say, said in that article, it's not my decision to make, um, noting that given its remote location, Roxbury technically isn't in the region served by CVCC, and there was no obvious use for the property. They, that may sound like a contradiction because our district is served by CVCC. Um, but what she's referring to is that the Northfield district and Williamstown's district has a choice between two different um, career centers. And apparently geographically, uh, Roxbury would fall within the, the other school system that they, um, they are looking at. I'm, I'm sure that's old kind of regulations in terms of geography, but Jill actually, or Scott might have a better intake on that one because they're, they, served on the board, but the geographic region may sound like a contradiction because they are our career center, but um, it, that's more of literal town, town lines than school districts, I believe. Um, then I also reached out to all the regional superintendents. I'm part of a regional group called the Winooski Valley Superintendents. Um, and that's 
our, ourselves, it's uh, Washington Central, Northfield, Northfield and Williamstown, Randolph, Harwood, um, White River Valley, Gonzalo Stowe, um, let me see, Lamoille North, um, and, and reached out to all of that group uh, to discuss, to see if anybody was interested in discussing the idea of a regional center using BOCES, um, the, the BOCES bill. Uh, this is what it came down to for the superintendents who answered. So, oh, Barry's part of that too, sorry. Um, two superintendents said they were willing to discuss it further, however, recognized it would take years to plan and that it would only work for their districts when there's no snow covered roads. Um, three superintendents believe the location is too far to make any sense for them and were not interested in the idea at all. Um, and two superintendents stated that they have no bandwidth or budget for that type of regional scaled effort and therefore were not interested in pushing the idea. Um, the budget piece was a real big component in, in what they had to say. Um, so that's the feedback I got from regional colleagues around those options to potentially use the use the school for a regional center in some way or to rent it out to the Champlain Valley Career Center. Does the board have any questions on those those that feedback I got? I see a lot of heads shaking around the table. Yep. No. Okay. <laughs> Like I can see Jill, Jake, and and now Mia. So and Jim. Um, so the board asked for financial predictions for potential MRPS community center. So this would be um I think different than what Dottie so beautifully just uh described in public comment. Uh this would be more of what Jim was referring to in the last part of his um kind of going over of where we've been and, as a MRPS community center. Um, so the district would still hold possession of the building in this, in this scenario. And I do wanna just really remind the board and the uh, community members who are tuning in is that these are only predictions. We can't possibly know exact numbers at this point because it's, it's just really thinking about hypothetical uses right now. Um, so they should be, these numbers should be considered as guides. So the annual cost for facilities and maintenance would highly be dependent upon the, the daily community use, you know, more community use requires more cleaning, um, and care. So it's anywhere from around $60,000, which is about what it is now with the limited use that it sees with the after school program, um, to $75,000. Uh, if we did this, then I would recommend to the board that we add a few new employees, a part-time manager of the property, um, and that would cost us around $35,000. The reason for that is that we're talking about renting the building, we're talking about a person being at the building uh, and being kind of in charge there. And we have a very limited business office. You know, our, our business manager runs a $32 million budget and she has two staff members. So we just simply don't have the capacity right now to take that on as a district um, responsibility. So we'd need to hire a part-time manager of the property. Um, I, and I'd also recommend that we need to hire a part-time business office staff um, to deal because that's all that essentially if the board were going in this direction, they would essentially be running a small business uh, through Roxbury Village School, and we simply don't have the capacity to handle that with our current staffing levels. We'd also want to continue employees. So we have an enrichment staff, um, and it is highly dependent on enrollment. And in the in the very beginning of this slide, the project the budgetary allowance for the enrichment for the after school enrichment said eighty five thousand dollars. I just want to remind the board that that's what's budgeted now. Um, we will go over that budgeted amount um, and have to fill in the gap for whatever's not coming in as revenue from um, caregiver contribution. So we'd want to budget more there than what we've budgeted now so that we wouldn't be running a deficit, quite a big a deficit, which is why the number's bigger. So it would be anywhere, depending on the enrollment, between $100,000 um, and $120,000. Dollars. And then dependent on the use, we'd also need to think about um, how this would influence insurance costs. Um, if we have private practices coming in like child cares and, and, peace and private daycares, we would need to talk to our insurance agent. And when I talked to Christina Kimball, our business manager about that, she 
gave a prediction that that would be an increase of costs at around $7,000 to $10,000. The potential revenue for this option, let's just say hypothetically, we brought in a private daycare provider um, and they used it five days a week, 52 weeks a year for eight hours a day. Uh, Andrew LaRosa put out a prediction of around a rental fee around $45 a day for the facility. And so that equals about $93,600. So there is some revenue that would cover a considerable amount of some of these costs as well. However, the costs would outweigh the revenue, um, we believe. So again, these are all projections and potentially could have other revenue sources as well that we just put one in so the board would have an idea, but there could be other revenue sources, obviously, to cover other costs as well. Yes. Can you say something about this last here? I was reading this because Rhett sent this out to some of us here in town, Aunt Judy Lusk, by the way. Um, and that math doesn't make sense because it says $45 a day, but yet it's multiplied 45 times five and 52 weeks, but then it's multiplied actually as $45 oh. per hour. You're uh, absolutely right, Judy. The math. <laughs> You're <laughs> absolutely right. It actually yeah, comes out to like 11,000 something. You're absolutely <laughs> right, Judy. That's Thank a big you for difference that in out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many times my business manager and I looked at this slide, Judy? We needed to send it to you beforehand. Uh, thank you for pointing that out to me. Okay. <laughs> we'll get that straightened out immediately. <laughs> it's a good clarification. So is it 45 a day or 45 an hour? Which is 45 hour. a day. So 45 day. dollars a day. And it was okay. figured as per hour. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, that looked like. I mean, you are 100%. I, I was thinking that too. I'm like, you say, what day care for She's going to fix it right now. Here we go. That is much lower. Yes. <laughs> Judy. <laughs> Judy, do you need a job? We're looking at a part-time uh, business office, Smith. Yeah. <laughs> that for trial? <laughs> no, that's total. That the that a a um, daycare would pay to rent the whole space. How much of the facility would that include? Monday? So for a daycare, I think the I think I heard the question say how much of the facility would that include? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for daycare, if we're talking about daycare specifically by um, state statute, the only area that can be used for a daycare is the area that Dottie talked about earlier with her beautifully color coded um, model. So it's the area that was previously the pre-K room and the kindergarten room. And there's a, there's a bathroom for our littlest kids right next to that. That's that's technically by law the only area that is currently fitted for that use for for use for little ones. Um, if 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 we're talking about more daycare possibilities or any child up to the age of five, I believe, and Dottie probably is the expert on this more than I am. Any child up to five, then we'd need to do renovations for um, room usage in the other area of the building. So really, we're only talking about those two building two two rooms to the left of the front door. Well, that seems like pretty cheap rent for all that space. Yeah. We open it up to anything else live here. Should we move to um, that's what the board asked me to bring, but I'm happy to answer any more questions. Okay. Uh, well, let's open it up to public comment. And I think we're going to change the format of public comment a little, where if you have questions, we will answer them to the best of our ability. Or at least let me know that we'll get back to you with further information. Um, so uh, let's, let's open it up. Um, uh, please come up to the, the table uh, if you wish to speak uh, and introduce yourself. Uh, and yeah, whoever, assuming people want to speak, whoever wants to go first, uh, yeah, please go ahead and step up. Good 
maybe somebody else was going to ask this, but it just popped in my head. So I know the timeline is difficult. I'm Mike French. Um, was a, the last class to go through the two-room schoolhouse back in the early 80s. The town went through a big budget vote, big bonds to do the expansion and add this town. It's a major investment in the town, and I hate to lose the facilities. Um, but the question came up in some of our committee meetings about timing, and I know the timing is difficult, but if Roxbury were to assume the financing and budgeting of the maintenance, the 60 to 90K a year, the select board starts budget planning in December. So there's just as you guys have budget deadlines and meetings, just wanted to raise that, that that's something that we need to plan for and set aside funds. Um, so to the extent that you can keep us updated on when that's going to happen could potentially mean issues for us, whether we're able to vote on it in March, because if we can't get it into the budget, then we can't vote on it. If we can't warn it, those kinds of things. And I'm by no means an expert in that, but um, that's something to keep in a consideration of your timelines on making decisions is how that ties into the town being able to make votes and that kind of thing. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's a great consideration. And I think it's important, kind of, as I said earlier, um, you know, we obviously know that the closure of the school was happening more quickly than I think anyone anticipated. Um, you know, so we are, our time the town might need some time to consider us move. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be in touch with the select board yeah. about how the time is. So sure that it's, oct it's October time. now. Yes, I, I think they, December yes. need to be laying some stuff out. Yeah. So potentially, even if there isn't going to be a decision, that would be helpful. Yeah. 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 And, and we, are, we are also trying to form our own budget process. And also, I just want to point out that you know, if if it's put in the budget but not spent because of the timing, you know, that's money that can be recuperated by either a town or town. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to point out was. Earlier talk, um, you said. Well, first you said there was a chance that the board would choose to use it for one of the uses mentioned. But it sounds, after going through it, that that's probably not the case. Is that? I mean, we still need to discuss it as a board. I, I, I think it's fair to say that a lot of those options are difficult. Okay. Okay. And then another thing you said is that if it was your determination to offer the building for $1, that you would give the district, quote, enough time. And that's what you were sort of just talking about. Could you, we were talking about community purposes, whatever. Could you define enough time? I think enough time will depend a lot on what the select board and the informed by the town feels is enough time. Well, I'm co-chairing a, a unofficial committee with Tom Frazier to look at the uses for the building. And we're finding that we already have not had enough time to just accomplish what we wanted to do by the end of October. Of course, if it's, it's just the beginning, but we're seeing that all of these things take much more time than we think they would. And so when we're talking about taking on a building where not only are we assuming the amount of money that you're saying, but we also have to find people to take over all these things that have been done by the district. And I, for one, do not see it at all possible that we could come up with that ready to roll on July 1st. And so I'm strongly recommending that the board consider giving us more time, like another year, because the 60,000 or whatever the figure is, 
is pretty much of a drop in the bucket compared to 1.5 million, which you allegedly saved by closing the building. And that was such a shock to our entire community and a gesture of taking it on for one more year so that we have more time to figure out where we're heading would certainly be appreciated. Well, I, we definitely appreciate that input. And, you know, I um, obviously we, we are at the point where we, you know, we're offered and still have some, some decisions to make, but I, I, I do feel confident in saying, one, you know, this is something we, we want to work out with the town and with our lawyers, but two, I think it's really the sentiment of the board that if we don't get the building, we want to really make sure that the town has the opportunity and, and that. And, and I think we all recognize that that means time and that it could be a fair amount of time. Okay, thank you. So my name is Ben Pincus and yeah, I just want to second what Judy said about we need more time. Um, I also think I have spoken to some people in state government positions and there wasn't a lot of help to be given or suggestions, but I really would like to see you as the school board to be lobbying on behalf of certainly Roxbury, but by extension, we're not the only town sort of in this mess of having lost our school and, you know, it's, it's a, you know, a shock, you know, 200 and plus years of a public school system gone in two weeks. And so I'm still reeling from it. And um, I think, as Judy said, we need that one more year. And I would love to see you folk as a school board lobbying on behalf of Roxbury or doing whatever, reaching out to our legislators and saying, these folks need one more year because we don't want this tax burden. I mean, this is both an incredible asset to the town of Roxbury as a school, and it's also a tremendous liability. And there is a lot of people in town who are genuinely, for good reason, concerned that we can't afford this as a tax burden, the maintenance is, and so on, until we you know, have an infrastructure set up. We have done some market research on you know, renting it and finding out, is it even viable to be able to afford to take this building on? I also would love to hear from um, you know, a number of folk in Roxbury commented that it'd be great to hear from the select board on this to be have some clarity from the Roxbury select board. And I know Renee is here um, and he's the chair of the select board. And Renee, Renee I, I don't know if you'd be willing to speak on behalf of the select board, just just because some folk asked me and we had this conversation, you know, where is the select board? You know, what's the stance of the select board in terms of envisioning the future for the school? Um, so that that clarity would be really helpful. I don't know if Renee, that could be the subject of the next select board meeting. Um, or if you'd be willing to speak now on behalf of the select board. Be well, I can't really speak on behalf of the right. select board. Can you speak on behalf of maybe yourself as chair or maybe not? <laughs> um, Anyway, just a thought and um, thank you. I just want to say also, you know, I look extensively over um, what's it called, the deconsolidated, you know, to, to end the merger and the union. And the process was so explicit and so detailed in the state of Vermont and how it's a very, the specificity, specificity was very clear on the process. And we lost our school with no sense of, of due process and time. And that's extremely painful. And to, to read this very clear uh, document in the state of Vermont and how you, you, you dissolve a union. So that's just another argument to have some equity here and to have that one more year. So thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Renee Bouchard uh, on the select board chairman. Um, you know, my thoughts, I'm being asked to speak about this. I can't speak for the whole board. Um, the fact is, is we have a group that is putting together a report we're supposed to get in October. And once we get that, then we would look at the viability of the options that we're presented with. So we either have to develop the options ourselves or get the options from the group. So the group's got promised that in October, so we will 
react to that when we get it and then make some choices and be able to put, uh, our goal is to be able to put options in front of the taxpayers so that people can make decisions. Excellent. No, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm Heather Holter. Um, I have a lot of things to say, but I think they're not going to take as long as they seem while I'm writing them down. Um, I um, try not to re reiterate too much of what others have said, um, really in support of a lot of what has been talked about so far. Um, I think it's really important to recognize that we've all been through a like learned a really painful lesson through this process. And I think that's true of the Montpelier community as well as the Roxbury community. And um, we've learned a lesson about how quickly really sweeping changes can happen. And so I hope that we can like apply our learning, <laughs> really, um, you know, turn around and apply what we learned from last year. Um, and to me, that means that we, um, prioritize like as communities, open communication, transparency, um, respect, curiosity, compassion, and really finding a way toward healing from the timeline that we experienced last year. So just that's my way of underscoring that. Um, I want to thank all of the people in Roxbury who have really tried to move quickly to start exploring all these options, like the incredible visioning and expertise that went into Dottie's presentation and the community, the conversations that we've had, the times that we've been meeting. We've been meeting every two weeks. I'm so grateful to um, Judy and Tom for bringing that group together and being really thoughtful about bringing what comes out of that group, which is really imagining a lot of possibilities to our select board. Um, but, um, and I'm really grateful to the select board for being prepared. Um, I wanna say that I think the after school enrichment program has been really um, a great step in the direction of what I just described. I'm, I'm hearing from all of my um, friends and families that are here that it is providing our Roxbury students an opportunity to be together, which doesn't mean, I mean, <clears throat> I think it's important that our Roxbury students feel a sense of belonging in Montpelier and a sense of belonging in Roxbury. And that's complicated, but in my opinion, that's what we signed on for with this merger. Like that was the commitment of the merger. Um, so I hope that we can really prioritize that um, and whatever ends up happening that we, we really think about, you know, what's best for these students um, and really put that as a, as a really central focus. Um, and I also think that, I just wanna say that I think that that enrichment program is an educational need. I mean, there's a lot of conversation right now about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And I think that that's what that enrichment program is around is about. And I think it's a need. Um, I also wanna just highlight that um, the um, Roxbury Roots program, which I'm a part of, um, you know, we had an idea that for a lot of reasons, like we wanted to um, revive an opportunity for our community to get together. We got a grant from the Vermont Community Foundation and we thought, oh, we'll build this potluck back up that we started 15 years ago. And within three months, we had 75 people at our community suppers, which are now a free community supper. And we start them at five because we want families to be able to come right from picking up after from the after school program. And it felt really good to be back in this room last Friday. And we had over 65 people here. Um, we had uh, live music, traditional Italian music. We had dancing. And a lot of those students who are now going to, um, you know, UES got to come back here and like really enjoy this space. And I cannot tell you enough how incredibly useful for this community that I think that is. And we would like to be able to continue doing that here. Um, and I guess I just want to echo um, 
that um, giving us time is really critical to making this work. And I really, I really appreciate what you said, Jim, about collaboration. And I think, you know, thinking about what it means that our two, two communities are connected is really not easy. And we knew that when we signed on to the merger, there was plenty of discussion about how far away Roxbury is from Montpelier, but it's, it's not that far. I mean, you know, I'm trying to be very positive, but if I, I read one more newspaper article or one more slide that talks about how remote Roxbury is, I will be pushed <laughs> to not be positive anymore because we all drive all the time. And I also know that you all drive. Tell me you don't go to Callis, you don't go to soccer games. You I mean, people drive 20 miles away all the time. And we are actually the geographic center of the state of Vermont. <laughs> I guess I just, the, the last thing I wanna say is that, um, you know, whatever, like, it seems like we have some really common, we've arrived at really common ideas about what it would be valuable to use this space for. And I mean, this, this space has been around for 170 years. Like we need to be good stewards of the next 170 years. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Um, thank you. <laughs> On the other side, um, Kristen Gettler. Heather Holder is always a very tough act to follow. Thank you for all of that and for all of you who have spoken so far. Um, it is really hard to be back in this room tonight having another conversation about this building and essentially about the future of this town. It is really, really emotional. Um, so I just want to acknowledge that. Um, and I'm going to read from my paper because I'm too tired to really kind of speak off the cuff tonight. Um, for one, it's, it feels really challenging to comment or advocate for any of the hypothetical uses proposed because they really largely feel like dead ends um, and they feel like they were presented as such. And um, I'm fairly aligned uh, with that assessment as well. And I, I do appreciate hearing that the idea of an MRPS community center does feel like a potential viable path to explore because it certainly feels like the most um, potentially viable one out there. Um, so it feels like with MRPS, the strategic planning process closed out last spring without deeply digging into a reimagined purpose for RBS and without an organized vision for the economic future of our state at the state level. I expect we will continue to hear the buzzwords of the day, which are consolidation and cost containment. Um, if the board is going to further dig into these options, I would love to know what is the timeline. And I think our community really needs to understand that timeline. Um, should the MRPS board find that there is no longer an educational purpose for RBS within the district and vote to officially close the school and offer it back to the town, I request that our very hardworking, high integrity board ensure funding uh, the maintenance of the building for an additional year as a non-negotiable budget priority in FY26 to ensure the Roxbury community has adequate time to consider the critical opportunity of the building for the town's future. When the decision was made in heartbreaking short order last March to no longer educate Roxbury's youngest students in our community, it was grueling and painful for everyone in this room, including all of you I know firsthand. Um, it was a decision that you two felt forced into due to the legislative and economic forces at play. In March, Roxbury came out in numbers and asked for a year, that year long runway to transition RBS students to UES and devise a process to discuss this building was not granted. While there are some very real losses to educating our students in their home community that we are really still actively grieving, there are gains to our students being in Montpelier, I know this, and the most significant which I am sure we have not fully realized and we won't for a while. The stakes were incredibly high then, and I would say they are almost even higher now given the gravity of this building and its importance historically and into this town's future. I'm asking you to carve the budget to afford Roxbury a central time. Individuals and activated organized community groups who you've heard from tonight are poised to have meaningful dialogue with our select board on this essential building at the center of our community. 
As a, as a community, we need time to name our values and understand the opportunities, the benefits and risk of resuming ownership to the building. So please, at the risk of being redundant, please grant us this time that we need. We love where we live. This is an essential facet of our community. Um, and I'm still kind of a school board nerd. <laughs> In the last couple of weeks, I've listened to presentations uh, on VPR from Zoe Sanders. Uh, Saunders. I've listened to uh, the reporting that came from a graduate student about the Act uh, 46 merger um, cost savings. Um, and both of these things, they, they frame school closure as hypothetical, as like a future maybe, and we are really at this point now, it feels, and I'm hoping that we can lay the groundwork in partnership and show other districts and communities who are very likely to be facing the same challenge, um, how to approach such a gravitational question with strategy, partnership, and compassion. Um, so... In the end, if the board votes to close the Roxbury School officially and offer the building back to the town, I'm asking the board and administration, who is both incredibly thorough and process proficient, to use a fine tooth comb and ensure maintenance of the building for an additional year as a non-negotiable component of a future budget. Uh, Tom Frazier. Uh, yesterday or last evening, I took a chance to go to Callis and sit in on the school board meeting. And uh, the discussion there was about whether or not they should change their configuration, their term, of their grade schools, elementary schools. They have five. They want to change it to three. They want to get rid of Callis and Worcester. And I'm just struck by the, how similar all the scenarios are that the, the, the board chairman and the superintendent put forward. It just mimics, I mean, it must be a playbook that you guys have from someplace. But the beauty of their situation, Callis and Worcester, is that when their merger was made, part of the, one of the requirements not like our requirement, which was just the majority of the board could close our school. So five of you people here are the ones that closed our school. It's not the whole board, it was five people. Um, the towns of Cowles and Worcester have to, the voters have to actually approve the closing. Now that happened because the town of Cowles had enough forethought to take the school district to court to have that put into the merger agreement. We didn't have that option. We had, you know, we were basically forced into this and, and we were led down the garden path by a consultant and it was all put in and was basically all in Montpelier's favor, right from the get-go. Um, as soon as they put four years in there, in that merger agreement, it should have been a red light the red flag, and the town should have turned that down, without a doubt. Um, but because we were under the gun, just like we were in March when, when you decided to take our school away, um, decisions were made in haste. The superintendent at the, at the budget meetings prior to your voting to close the school never presented the fact that our school could have been saved by a mere 1.8% increase in the, in the tax rate. 1.8%, and I remember telling you 2%, and you said, I can do the math. Well, you didn't do the math, and you didn't have the guts to present that to, to the Montpelier voters. They would have certainly saved our school for a lousy 2%. That's about $8.67 a, uh, a month on, or not a month, yeah, a month on uh, a $400,000 house. And yet you guys didn't have the cojones to present that. So here we are today. So we're asking for another year. I don't know what a year is going to give us. You know, we may come up at the end of the year with a blank 
just like we have it right now. But you, we are providing a space for you to have an after school program. And we have a, a very, from, I mean, I live across the road, so I know it's a, you know, it's a well attended uh, group and it's, you know, they're having cooking lessons on Tuesday. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's, and it's run by a woman who does a great job with it. She has for several years. Um, so I don't see why you can't, for a lousy hundred and what, 85 and 60, $145,000, why can't you continue that program forever? I mean, what's $145,000 compared to what you've taken away from us? It's nothing. You know, I don't even, I don't know how much coffee that would be in a month, but it's not very much. Um, so I would, I would, like you to consider giving the town at least another year and if not and, and even on top of it a year continue the the after school program which is essential to kids coming back my daughter she has two kids in the school one of them i guess she has to go and pick up and for some reason at the gas station in montpelier in northfield south village while she was there, her other son is a, he was home and he was at the school. And, but her bus, my granddaughter's bus was late. So my daughter sitting at, the, at, the, <laughs> at South Village and has to call us to come and, you know, to take Teddy at five o'clock. And then she finally got home whenever the school bus showed up. We have bus issues now, you know, one bus driver quit or got fired. I don't know what the scenario was, but it wasn't working out. So now the whole thing is being done with one bus. I mean, there's so many things about this, this whole thing that has been so rushed and not worked out properly that we are paying the price for it. And you know, come winter, it's beautiful now, but come winter, those things are gonna exaggerate dramatically. You know, there are people who live a mile off the back, off the main road. Now, what is their kid going to do when the bus doesn't show up or shows up late or whatever? You know, so the very least you can do is give the town the time to get this sorted out and for us to negotiate just how much the, the district is going to contribute to the ongoing cost of this building. Um, like I say, we entered into this agreement. I mean, I voted against it years ago. Um, I knew it was a disaster, but uh, you know, people in town didn't want to join with Northfield. They wanted Montpelier. Well, most people knew that you know, being the, being the the guy with two votes out of a nine vote nine member board, it was pretty much cast in stone at that point. So anyway, I just would really ask that um, you give us that extra year, continue the after school program for $145,000. Let us use the building. Don't put restrictions on use of the kitchen. Don't put restrictions on use of, the, of, the, of this room for the roots program. 65 people, 75 people show up to these dinners. I mean, it's a beautiful thing to, to witness. I don't know if that sort of thing happens in Montpelier. I seriously doubt it, but it may. Um, but you have taken so much from this town. The least you can do is put a lousy $145,000 per year back into it for as long as forever. You can continue to own the building. We don't need it back. You can continue to own it. We can work out some arrangement to rent some of the space. $45 a day for all that room for a daycare. I mean, that's pretty cheap. So, all right, thank you. Oh, I'd just like to say that last night, the board voted against closing the two schools. 
because and there, there were at least 200 people in that room. My name is Dave Santi. Actually, it's Amadeo David Santi. Um, I guess you all know that um, I'm pro wanting to have a school here. Um, I took an unscientific poll at the last election we had, and I got the people, some of the people, I didn't get everybody, didn't get the uh, absentees. But the question was, would you vote to keep the Roxbury School open? 64 yeses, 13 noes, 10 don't bother me. Okay? Now, I personally am committed to trying to get a school back here, one way or another. Okay? Now, that's not my axe to grind tonight. My axe to grind tonight is... These, this lovely lady here and a bunch of other ladies cooked a beautiful dinner, but they couldn't cook it here. They had to cook in other places and bring it here when we have a perfectly good stove. I called Ms. Silverosa and asked him, well, I don't know if I asked him, but I talked to him about shutting off the pilots, which is simple. Um, a lot of Homeowner stoves have each pilot adjustable. The commercial ones, usually there's a central place that you could just turn off a, a valve and shut off the pilots. And then you would use um, those lighters to light the stove. Um, I offered to, and I live across the street, I own the house over there too, um, to turn the gas off and on for those dinners because it's a month apart. Um, now, the very fact that we're prevented from using the stove because of your liability or your worry about our liability um, says to me, everything else says to me too, we want the school back as soon as we can get it back. I'm totally opposite to these people. We never wanted to be with Mount Player. We were forced to be with Mount Player by the state. We wanted to go with U32. U32 has capacity, and we could go with U32. They got plenty of capacity. Your last thing that you had on the board here was 1,100 and something student capacity, U32, and they had 750 students. So, um, as I said, I'm unlike most of the people in this town as a person. And as my wish to get this school back as soon as we can to get rid of you, to get rid of your rules, your... Uh, let me just say this. I don't know if you understand this or not, but people that live away from the cities think and act different. They do different stuff. And they have to act on certain things that you wouldn't act on in the city because otherwise we don't get nowhere. So um, I'll end by saying, I want the school back as fast as I can get the school back and get you people gone and start a private school or whatever kind of school we can have here, okay? Um, you probably have copies of my Spartan piece of crap that's just a guideline that means nothing, okay? But um, I think, and I'm going to try to manipulate a vote, I think the people of this town will vote, I guess, vote to me. When I ask you, would you vote to um, keep the school open? What I'm saying to you I think, maybe I'm wrong. What I'm saying to you is, are you willing to pony up money to keep this school going? Am I wrong in that thinking? It definitely takes money to run a school. No, but if I, if, if I say to you, would you vote to keep the school open and you vote yes, you tell me yes, 
Are you ponying up the money to keep it going? Seems to me like you are. Can't say for certain, but it sure seems like it. You know, if I ask you to vote, what does it mean? It don't mean for free. Nothing is for free. So I want the school back as fast as we can. I really do. And we want to do something else here, education-wise. Okay. Um, one last thing. Education here may be adequate. Don't know, not qualified. Okay. But I can say this. We're the biggest, baddest country in the world. And our education don't even rank in the top three. Okay. Um, being a simple guy, my thought is we're way to hell over administered for starters. Um, surely the system needs some kind of change. You can't afford what, when does Mount Pillar vote? No, you can't afford what you're doing. So something drastic has to change. And I think you better get used to it because it's coming down the pike, whether you believe it or not, it may take a few years, but there's going to be a big change to the funding and to education. There's got to be because we're out of money. Thank you very much for listening. You want to say anything to me? I said thank you. Okay. Anything else anybody has to beat on me? Not a problem. Okay. Hey everybody, Andre Salini. Um, I just had one question. We're all worried about those mosquitoes. Um, I hadn't heard so far um, any talk about if the um, school district offers the school back to Roxbury for a dollar. If by whatever process the the uh, the select board of the town decide whether they're going to buy it back. And through that process, the town says no. Or if, like, for example, if it goes to a vote of the citizens, what what happens then, Jim? Do you know what the... The, the district <laughs> would be uh, at liberty to offer it to another potential buyer. And what happens to the value of the facility? Uh, because you've only gotten it for a dollar, but it's worth more than that. I, I think it, the even if you subtract the um, yeah. investment that the districts made into the building. The, I, my belief is that the district would be able to to sell it to another buyer at whatever value uh, it could. And then what happens to the money? The money would go to the district. To the district. Okay. And you think that that's like the way the law is? Has I think it's that. pretty clear the way the merger okay. is, is okay. set up. And yep. yeah, I mean, the, the only circumstance that would happen again is if the district decided to not have any use for it, the town made a firm decision to reject buying the building for a dollar. Um, you know, then the district would be in a position where it basically had a building the town didn't want, the district couldn't use, and it would be free to you know, put it on the market, and, which, which I don't think is a result that anybody wants because then it would go out of the control of, of both entities. Right, certainly wouldn't want that. Um, okay, I think that answers my question. I mean, I guess I have a lot of questions for the Select, oh, sorry, did yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, my, I'm not, and, um, my, um, my understanding also was that because there isn't significant financial, there isn't a significant, a significant financial investment that's needed that the select board can make a choice without necessarily, in a, in a, from a legal perspective, without necessarily putting it to a town-wide vote. Um, because there isn't a, a major financial 
uh, investment um, because it's only a dollar. Mm -hmm. So that's like a legal technicality. But well, I mean, I yeah, I mean, uh, I hear that. Uh, uh, if you look at it on the other side of it, though, that the cost of the exchange between the district and the town is a dollar. However, the value of the building and the property minus the improvements is a substantial sum of money for this town, right? It's over, you know, over a hundred thousand. Yeah, I don't know. What is the building? What is it worth? Does anybody know what it's worth? No. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I don't know if the select board can make that decision by itself. I, I just don't know. But how? But but I just wanted to get out there, you know, for for the town to be discussing, you know, what, what may eventually come is that there's a discussion about whether the town should take this building back and whether we can afford it tax wise to to pay for keeping it up for four years in community purpose before we can decide. Yep. I was gonna say you actually. I mean, you could take. <clears throat> to build it for a dollar tomorrow and put it on the market the day after tomorrow and and if reimburse you could sell it for 2.9 million then you could take you know 90,000 from that 2.9 million yep. reimburse the district for the yep. upgrades and then that yep. you know 2.8 whatever million would go to the town i mean i think a wonderful thing for the select board to do for the town and for the citizens would be to map the, these different you know, ideas out so that everybody can see it and everybody can also understand, you know, how much the tax burden is because we talk about taxes a lot, but, you know, when it comes down to paying your property taxes, if you own property in Roxbury or in Montpelier, the difference in your, you know, actual tax bill is kind of like what really matters to people. It's a little bit more, you know, for me being a terrible math a scholar, it's esoteric to talk about percentages, <laughs> but you know when there we're talking about hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars. You know that's a little bit easier for me to grasp. Um, so I, I just hope that the thank you for answering that question. It's very helpful to me because I like to think about what are the things we're not talking about, <laughs> like what are the flip sides of the coins and stuff. So so thank you. Yep. Mike Crunch again. Um, when we were discussing the merger here at our town meeting, I think it was a previous superintendent was talking about uh, the merger. Uh, I brought up the concerns of busing because as a high school student at the time, you know, I was riding 45 minutes to an hour on the bus, I think each way or an hour and a half both ways because we did the Roxbury side, the East Roxbury side, went to Northfield. So I had strong concerns about our elementary kids going to Montpelier and even our high school kids going to Montpelier. Um, and we got assurances from the superintendent that at the time that there was going to be extra busing. We, they were even offering after school busing so that the kids could participate in extracurricular activities and things of that nature. Um, so I felt pretty good about the response back then, but that was at the time for high school students. Now we're sending our elementary school students to Montpelier. Um, and on the September 25th front porch forum, um, I saw there was a posting for a bus monitor. Um, my concern is that do all buses now have bus monitors or are we seeing that the commute for our youngest students is causing behavioral issues because the rides are so long. And we have to consider parents have to get the kids to the bus pickup, then they have to get on the bus and then do the commute. So it's not just the maybe 30 minutes, 35 minutes ride on the bus. I don't wanna get into personnel issues or anything of that nature, but I'm concerned that our Roxbury bus needs a bus monitor and what's behind that, what's driving that. Um, our kids having challenges 
with that bus route. I feel pretty good hearing about the enrichment program because that sounds like it would take the students and bring them back together at the Roxbury School afterwards, um, which is probably a better environment than you know a bus type environment. Um, so that's just my concern. I don't have students in the school system, but um, it's just I'm very concerned about this bus monitor issue and what's going on and do we need to dig deeper into that um, if it's an issue just with the Roxbury route because that's what what's posted or is this something we do on all the Montpelier buses and we just need to fill an open vacant position. Jim, you want me to take that? Yeah. Um, well, thank you. You, you probably can't tell. Uh, yeah, no, I can just see Mike. Um, thanks for asking that question, Mike. I appreciate it. Uh, all, most of our buses have bus monitors um, in Montpelier and it, now in Roxbury starting today, thankfully. Um, and the answer to your question is yes and yes. So, um, so most of our buses have monitors. We've always tried to fill from within. So usually they're filled by instructional assistants who are already employees of our, of our, um, school buildings because it's easy. You know, they, they get on the bus early, they go to work, they jump off at their building, they get back on at the end of the day and they, you know, so it's usually pretty easy. Um, we've struggled to find a bus monitor for the Roxbury route. We looked when it was serving just the village school. Um, and we've always struggled to find that, which is why um, it is a necessity that there's a bus monitor on that bus. Um, and we reached out through Front Porch Forum. We hadn't done that before. We don't typically do that for our um, positions that we're looking for to hire, but we we needed one because there's 60 kids on the bus as there's 60, 70 kids on the Montpelier buses and one bus driver and that many kids, it causes some challenges for the one bus driver who's driving a very large vehicle along roads <laughs> with that many kids in it. And so is it, a, is it a matter of one group of kids being misbehaving more than another group of kids? No, they're being kids. Um, and, and yes, there's misbehaviors on the bus. I think there's been misbehaviors on a bus since the beginning of buses. <laughs> um, so that is is just a, a fact, a case in point, and it's a really hard job to be a bus monitor or a bus driver. So, so thankfully, we've got a highly qualified bus monitor um, on the Roxbury run now that, that will continue when we get another driver and we return to the two bus routes, which we're going to do as soon as we get a new driver. And that person will stay on um, probably the village route because that's the bus that's the most full of kids um so the bus driver will or bus the bus monitor will stay on there so really the short answer is yes and yes oh we try to get a bus monitor on every bus and it was hard to fill that position which is why we went out to the front porch forum community to to get some, and that's where they we found them so it was good <laughs> it was a good thing i think i'm hearing assurances that it's not related to the an extra long commute for those students it's um no, we try to get a bus monitor for all of our buses okay. simply because of the nature of lots of small children who are doing a whole lot of learning on the bus yeah. <laughs> um, and one bus driver. That's just not a good ratio for that's a ratio for for some things to happen with kids. <laughs> to be a Vermonter back in my day, the uh, Chunk Goni, my bus driver, grabbed a student by the ear and tossed him out the door on the side of the road. Yeah, see, we don't do that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. that's not allowed anymore. We'd like to see that not happen. Thank you, Libby. Oh. Dave Santy. One more question. Yes. Yeah. Well, can we use the kitchen? Can we use the stove? Can we work that out? That is not my issue. Of, Olivia, you can probably speak to that. I know there's liability issues. And yeah, our insurance company has advised us because the building is empty for large parts of the day to not have the gas on. Yeah, I turn it off. After the dinner, I'll turn it off. I live across the street. I don't know if our insurance company would 
would go for that. We well, then give us the goddamn building back. You know, this is insane. We're trying to run it. You know, these ladies have to cook here and there and bring it in because you're worried about us blowing up. We're not going to blow up the building. For God's sakes. Jesus Christ. City people. Just beautiful. Sorry we ever got involved with you. What it is. The goddamn truth. The country, we do things that need to be done. We do them. Tom Frazier again. You know, I've had my differences with the board. There's no question about that. But I have to apologize to you for Mr. Santee's outrageous remarks. So there's no there's no place in this room for that. Don't you dare but, apologize to me without you think you are. I'm I'm here to, to straighten a couple things out, or at least to bring them to, to the front. First of all, I think Rhett's wrong in the fact that if you buy, if the select board cannot, they can take property if it's given to them. But if they have to pay for it, it has to be a town vote. So even if it's a dollar, I mean, we had a vote to sell it for a dollar and we'll have a vote to get it back for a dollar. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a question that the select board is gonna have to work out with its attorneys. So I mean, the district, you know, the district is, is not- Good enough. question for a lawyer. Yeah, it's a question Question for a lawyer, question for the, the town. The district is- Well, it's, the, it's, but, it's clear in town law that you cannot accept, you can't buy property without approval of the town, okay? The other thing is that, uh, Mr. La Rosa told me that the, the payback for the improvements was in the neighborhood of two hundred and forty-five thousand dollars, not ninety thousand. I, I might have that number wrong. Do you know yeah, that number is wrong. It might be wrong. Ninety thousand dollars was for the bathrooms, I think. Or... I'm, I'm sorry, Jim. I don't have it off the top of my head, but I can certainly find out. Yeah. I, I, I no, will, you I don't have to find out. That's what he told me. He emailed it to me. I can dig it up if I have to. Um, there was one other thing that I forgot, but now I forgot. Oh, the, the value of the building. Mr. Duggan seems to think it's worth $2.5 million because at one school board meeting, he said, well, that's a $2.5 million asset, as though Montpelier better hang on to it. Well, it's not a $2.5 million asset. As far as Montpelier is concerned, it's a $1 asset. But if you look online at school buildings for sale, you have a hard time finding a, a school building that sells for $2.5 million. They just don't have that kind of value. And certainly not in a location like this. You can buy huge school buildings for a couple hundred thousand dollars. And we have a local, the guy that built this building that we're sitting in, who was your assessor, for the last 10, 15, 20 years, I don't know how long Steve Twombly worked from up to his office. He said it has very little value because of the, the attachments that the town has to have on it. One is we have to have the town hall and we have to have the water and sewer system. So what do you really have to sell? You know, the value is not that great if we have to pay back $245,000. So, um, the, the possibility of buying it and reselling it, I just, I think that has to be taken off the table because what you're doing is you're, you're telling people in Roxbury, don't take this back and make use of it. Sell it and make a bundle. Well, you know, the likelihood of that happening is very remote. So, you know, I, I just wish people would stop saying that because it just makes it that much harder for the town to um, make something of this building. Yeah, and I'm not an advocate for anything. I'm just, I mean, the question was asked about what could happen to the building. And, you know, if, if the town- Well, don't don't use $90,000 if you don't know what's back here. Well, it, it, okay. it might be $250,000. Okay. 
Okay. Regardless, it's 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 zero if the town takes it for a dollar and uses it for community use for five years. That that obligation goes away. Yeah. But if it wants to sell it in that time, it owes it would owe the district whatever that amount. You realize, of course, that if we keep it for five years and pay sixty and just leave it empty and pay sixty thousand dollars a year, that's three hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. And you realize $60,000 is 25% of our municipal tax, municipal costs right now. 25%. People aren't going to take kindly to that. That's why I'm imploring that you keep the after school program and keep the maintenance of the building. Maybe split the cost with the town in some, some shape or form. But do it so that the townspeople don't have to suffer the cost of you know, maintaining the building or getting rid of the most valuable piece of real estate we have in town. And God knows what it could turn into that. We don't have the best record in town of having properties purchased and maintained. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <clears throat> My name is Heidi Albright. Um, it's really hard to say anything different from what's been said. Um, I'm a member of the planning commission in town and um, we're in the process of starting. Uh, we just started a municipal planning grant to revitalize our village. We're just getting started with that. We're working with GB architecture um, as consultants and um, I would advocate again to echo what everyone else has said for time in order to work through the process for our town to envision a future for this building in whatever format, but to allow us enough time to pull a very diverse community together to talk about these issues. Um, the timeline feels incredibly compressed as it did back in March, the decision to close the building felt very compressed. If we could have more time to have these discussions and to bring everyone to the table, not just the people who are able to come to a meeting at 6.30, dinner time hour, you've got kids to get ready for bed, but everybody in our community. Um, the after school program is clearly an essential part of our community and keeping the bonds that the, the kids have already formed over years of going to school together. There are new families in town. Those families um, and the community that was found in this school needs a place to thrive. We're able to do that um, through the roots dinners to bring the adult community together, but I think the kids really need that time and space um, to, to sort of root them here in this place. So again, to continue that program as long as possible in this building would be very, very helpful. Um, I had other things to say, but I feel like others have said it much more eloquently than I have at this point. But the last thing I wanna say is I wanted to especially to thank Rhett and Kristen for um, all the service that they've provided to our town. And um, I think I've never been on a school board, but I have to say that it looks like one of the hardest jobs that anybody could ever do for their community. So thank you to the young people, thanks to all of you, but especially thanks to Rhett for sticking with this community and representing us so strongly and beautiful and likewise to Kristen for having the courage to step away and know that you can do really good things by moving out of this circle. So thank you, Rhett, for having the courage to stay and Kristen for being there on the outside holding us. So thank you again. And I really, really encourage you guys to consider giving us one more year to work through this process as a whole community. We're diverse, we're really intelligent, we have a lot of grit, a lot of independent thinkers and a lot of creative thinkers. 
And we just need time to put all of that together and come up with something that's gonna work for all of us, not just for the planning commission or the school board or the families here, but everybody in this community deserves a chance to figure it out. And to do that, we need more time. Thanks. Thanks, French. Uh, since this um, school closure discussion came up, I've been thinking about what happens to our town as far as people wanting to move to town. We're a small town, you know, 500 residents that have to support the same miles of roads as, say, Northfield, which is 3,000. So our property tax base is very important to us. If we don't have families and people buying property in town because there's no school, that significantly hurts our tax base. That makes it harder to live here. And down the road, if we don't have families moving here, what happens in say 10 or 20 years if Roxbury ha only has 10 students that are going to Montpelier? At that point, could Montpelier say, we wanna break the merger with Roxbury. It's not worth our time and effort to deal with a population of 10 students anymore. And does, would that put Roxbury in a position where, hey, we need an elementary school. Um, we need to go back to tuitioning our high school students out. Um, one of my concerns with the future of this building is that it gets repurposed in a way that it could not go back to a school function, which it feels like, you know, the state funding model could change. Um, again, if Montpelier decided not to be merged with Roxbury anymore because there was no advantage or there was too much of a cost for buses or whatever that may be. Um, and then just because I'm naive about the whole process of the way schools, school taxes are paid, um, if we only had 10 students, is every resident in Roxbury paying, say, an equal share as Montpelier residents, whereas most of the population of the school is Montpelier residents, but Roxbury is only sending 10, is every 500 person tax owning per per person paying way more to send those 10 kids, you know, is it on a per, per house basis? Or as I know when we tuitioned to Northfield, it was a flat per student rate. But now that we're part of the district, you know, if we've got 60 kids versus 10 kids, does our taxes stay the same even though we're only sending 10? Are we still effectively supporting a 60 kid tax base um, when there's only 10? And so that was sort of one side issue. And then the other was, you know, what happens down the road if Montpelier opts to unmerge because there's not a, a financial incentive or reason to stay merged with, with Roxbury? Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe, Mike, we can make a coffee date because I learned some things and maybe I can talk you through some of this. Yeah, it's, it's a, a lot big to question to figure. I'm happy to try and share what but just as, it, comes as a general sense, can you speak to 60 versus 10? How that, what, what's the total figure that Roxbury pays to the district? I mean, Does it drop down to we one sixth? Every, the way the rules work in Vermont is, or yeah, it's, it's that it's that the cost is distributed as equally as possible per district. It's distributed as equally as possible across the state, and then each school district or uh, supervisor union and make individual decisions on top of that. And then that distribute, gets distributed equally among that school district or supervisory union. So the proportions were all similar based on property value, whether there were 40 kids here or no kids here or however it works. Proportionally, everyone in our district was paying the same amount based on property. Um, okay, so that if, that brings if Montpelier up. Montpelier wanted to to separate from Roxbury, there would have to be a vote in Montpelier, and there would also have to be a vote in Roxbury. Same, right? If yeah. Roxbury wanted to separate from Montpelier, there would have to be a vote in Montpelier, and there would also have to be a vote in Roxbury. So Roxbury could theoretically say, "We don't want to separate 
and then that wouldn't be able to happen. So there are a lot of checks and balances in the system, and um, I'd be happy to talk to you more of that. Okay. So what I'm taking away is that say if in a you know a district average say one in ten property owners has kids in the school system, but because the Roxbury Village School is closing down, we now have one in twenty property owners has a child in the school system, we'd still be paying at that rate of one in 10. Mm -hmm. um, so that puts an undue burden on the town, you know, moving forward. And I don't know if we're gonna see enrollments drop, but it's my suspicion that Roxbury's student population is going to drop by not having the center in the town and anchor. Um, even if it's just a daycare, you know, it's not the same as a school, but at least a parent could look at buying property in Roxbury, understanding that, hey, we've got a daycare and an after school program. So that means I can actually have a job that I can attend eight hours a day and then pick my kids up after school kind of thing. Um, so that's just something that's been running through my head because I feel that is going to be our future. We're going to have less families moving into town but our tax burden is going to be based on a district. So Roxbury residents would be overpaying to educate. So for example, if the current, you know, per student tuition district-wide is $30,000 a year, you know, Roxbury might be paying an effective rate of $50,000 a year because their student population has gone down compared to the district because families aren't moving to Roxbury anymore. I also like, So we might want to, I think it's hard to conjecture too far down the road. It is, but yeah. it's something to, to keep in your mind is, is there equity for the people in Roxbury if the student population changes because we no longer have any kind of school? You could be asking the, the same question of people who don't have children are also paying. Oh yeah, I tax. completely understand that. Okay. Um, yeah, and that's what the town may future may look like is a town of people with no children. But does that mean those people are paying a higher percentage of their taxes to a district that has that has all lots of children that need to be educated? So and again, I'm not I don't want to get in the weeds on taxes. It's just the general concept of, you know, if we get down to a student population that's tiny, tiny, you know, is the rock town of Roxbury stuck with an expenditure for education that does nothing for, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not equitable for the number of students that are being sent. Would it be cheaper to send our students tuition somewhere else than to be paying, you know, an effective rate of 50K per student because our student population is so low? I wonder if Jake can answer that really quickly. <laughs> leave some room um just because jake has the expertise i think i can answer it too but i think jake is the expert in the room in this and jake i think that has a very quick answer i don't mean to put you on the spot but um in the sense that student population is not calculated per school or per town it's calculated by district so it if our student enrollment in the district goes down um, that would influence tax rates because we'd have a lower weighted people, right? But if the if it's just one town, let's say hypothetically Montpelier's enrollment goes up at the same level that Roxbury's goes down and our, our, our population of student remains the same, that doesn't influence Roxbury's taxes over Montpelier's, correct? Yeah, um, Brett, I can help with this. Um when you're talking to Mike, um, it's probably too complicated to go through right now. Um, it's based on per pupil spending. Um, if Roxbury left the district, but then tuition, a bunch of students somewhere, it's still based on per pupil spending. So even if you have one student or 10 students or 500 students, it's what you spend per pupil determines your district -wide. homestead tax rate. So what I'm hearing then is just throw a number out. If Roxbury has one student attending the district, every taxpayer would be contributing, we'd be paying more than $30,000 for that one student in property taxes. We would be paying 
for yeah. the entire district averaged out over. That's what Act 60 did. Act 60, before Act 60, your school costs were internalized to your town, but that was not fair because towns without a lot of grand lists couldn't raise money very easily. Now it's all socialized through the Ed Fund and what your homestead is, you know, your, your house residential homes, the rate is based on what you spend per pupil. Whether you have one, 10, 500, or 2,000, it doesn't matter. Um, and it all, it all gets managed through the Ed Fund. Okay. So yeah, so Roxbury could be paying say $400,000 in school taxes, whether we have 60 kids or one kid. Yes. Attending the district. Yep. And, and that's, that's true. And uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I bring that up because if we have families moving into town and buying properties, that's less of an impact. And they would do that if we had a school here in Roxbury or an elementary school, they're less likely to do that. So again, we're looking at a future of fewer students, but still covering the per student Maybe. cost. Maybe, I mean, Maybe. Yeah, I mean it's hypothetical. Is, but. Roxbury quite honestly has more affordable housing for starting families than La does. Yeah. I don't know how many properties are for sale currently. It's not that many. Yeah, well, it takes a few. Okay, thank you. Okay. Dave Santi again. Um, I think maybe what he was getting at, and I'm not sure whether it's still there or not, but there are used to be sending towns and receiving towns. And if we have fewer students, do we become a sending town, basically? Originally, what they tried to, they did this with was to stop towns like Warren, who had ultimate tax base. And so they became a sending town because they have more tax base than students. They, they feed other schools. So if we have fewer students, do we still have high taxes to feed other schools? We do, that's what I thought. Great system. Thank you for all the comments. Do we have anyone else who wants to make a comment and then we can kind of go to the next steps? And we also, uh, we forgot to approve our consent agenda, so we need to do that. Um, can I just say one quick last thing? Sure. Um, I just want to sort of emphasize the curiosity part that I said earlier. And I think, you know, we've said a lot and, and, and you know, we're encouraging all of our friends and neighbors to email you and reach out to you. But if you have questions about things that people said tonight, you can reach out to us. I mean, we would love to be able to have the opportunity to make sure that you understand things that people referred to tonight, things that are important to us, things that are harder, things that are easier. So I just want to. No, thank you. Uh, and I also just want to also acknowledge the great service of Brent and Kristen and all we've done on the board. And I also want to put on another call. We do have a vacancy for Roxbury, and it's really important that that voice be heard on, on the board, that, you know, Red is doing a, a fantastic job, but um, it's lonely. Uh, and uh, I'm sure he would love, love to have that seat filled. So um, I understand it, it looks tough and probably feels tough, and, and I know that, that this is a, a particularly hard time for a Roxbury voter to come onto the board, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, if anybody's willing to do it, you know, please, please, uh, please let us know. Is that, is that, is that a question or do you volunteer? I'm volunteering, but that's a good question. Is that a full vote now? Or is he still unhappy? Uh, good question. I mean, I don't think we can change the charter and, and give, give Rhett more than, than uh, 
is a lot of it. So red, the fact red is actually one vote. The love for the folks get two when and whether we can split our votes is, is an open question. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, so we have to approve the consent agenda. We should probably map out some next steps for this. Yeah, before we go to the consent agenda? Yes. Okay. Because I was. Uh, and uh, I think we have policy monitor. Yeah. I was just going to ask. Yeah, maybe I'm kicking off board discussion. I don't really know, but but I one of the things we wanted to know from the Roxbury community was of all of the options that we have, all of the options that we have, what feels the most palatable and I think or what, you know, what are yeah. what's the community most interested in? And I think after listening tonight and of course there's ample room and time for other comment in the next couple of months. And then that's, yeah, we are, please send us emails. Uh, we are taking yes. know, ongoing comment by email about this. So, uh, you know, if you have further thoughts or uh, didn't get a chance to speak or, you know, you are comfortable public speaking or uh, put it in writing um, or just want to read it, like you said, please send us an email. Absolutely. Um, Libby, could you put up the slides again and show the one that has the parameters on it? Because I think that's the most constructive and, and we have a question in the back. frame for our. I'm sorry, I just wanted to, to say to solicit more feedback. It might be great to have a couple more front porch forum posts. After yes. Okay. Because I think, I think not everyone can make this Definitely. Just take care of the people that. Yeah, no, thank you for that. So the way I was thinking about this is in terms of especially of tonight was to try to hear from the Roxbury community about what their you know interest is in the many different um, options. And I I can just summarize for my like what I heard myself is that community center is the one that rises to the top that I wasn't really hearing try to investigate magnet school more BOCES more or or the central office options it was like community center and whether or not that is held by the district or held by the town I think is the next question to answer but I just that was one of the things I was hoping to hear was would we get any interest in any of the other it what would the interest be in the multiple different options so that I just wanted to say as a sort of a recap of what I heard and then um yes absolutely to be getting more to doing more outreach after this in order to get more public comment that is what that is our intent is to do front porch forum posts and our social media and have a be doing a more direct ask to get people from both Roxbury and Montpelier to weigh in on the different options. But if we could, if if the board, if we were interested in saying moving in any one direction tonight, I think that would be helpful for our communities to be able to tell us what to what they're actually weighing in on. Um, so I would be interested in a board discussion and I realize it is already quarter of nine, but I would be interested in a board discussion of the our first decision that we have to make is do we have an educational use for the building and I think the the simplest path is to say which of these that are educational use of if any of them are ones that we want to pursue further and that I think would be a good discussion for the board to have so let's let's see if we can let's see if we can have that let's, let's see where the board is for for one, let's do a show of hands. Who feels there's one or more educational uses that is required on the board? Wait, I, I, I don't know. Oh, so. I said, of the options presented, do you feel that one or more of them is viable given the parameters? Yeah. yeah. Do you feel more than one is viable given the parameters? You mean the, of the five? Of the five. Yeah. 
I know that. Yeah. I don't think I have to. Yeah, I don't think I think we clearly have information that the fifth one is viable. I don't think we have enough information to suggest that the others are. Okay. And what what are the what pieces of information are missing on the others? I mean, you don't know what you don't know. I don't know that we would ever have that information, but it's pretty clear to me that the fifth the fifth option, we do have enough information. At least I have enough information to say without a doubt that, that it meets an unmet need in the district. The fifth one is the community. The community. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're currently using it. Yeah, the after school well, program is- So there's, that's, program. see, that's the thing is that that fifth option isn't, that fifth option has a bunch of expenses that are currently being used. Currently, there's a use. There's an after-school program. There's a cost of about $120,000 to the district. That wasn't up there. That wasn't one of the five. It currently has an educational use. It, this it's year, embedded. It have the same it's embedded exact with educational it. use next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah or, Richmond. I also want to point out that it's it's part of what's up there, but I also am. Um, sensitive to the um, to the the necessary sort of circumstances for the after school program to to continue, which means putting a lot of pressure on basically one person that's doing an incredible job, and that I don't I wouldn't like this board to be making that you know to be sort of putting parameters on some kind of decision that depends on an individual being compelled to continue in that service and in that and in that function and in that work, which I think takes a lot of heart and energy. Um, and so I, I'm reluctant to tie in one, two things. Like, I think that the community use is a great thing. I don't want the district to be responsible for how, for, if, that's an MRPS community use. That's not a Roxbury community use. So that community use is not the same community use that I think this community is talking about, number one. Mm. Number two, um, you know, there's a difference between $60,000 to maintain a building and $120,000 when it depends on somebody being roped into a situation that, that we don't know necessarily that they can sustain uh, or want to sustain, um, which is another argument for more time for this 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 conversation, because um, I would hate to put I would hate to have a conversation that would put someone in, in an uncomfortable situation where they feel like their their community depends on them, but they don't have it in them to continue to run this incredible program mm -hmm. that takes a tremendous amount of effort. Um, which we appreciate very, very much, and it matters very much, I think, to everyone that that sees it happening, families that participate. I just want, I don't want to tie those two things together because I care very much about the person that runs the program. Can I ask a question? I've heard a lot of talk about, like, more time. Is there an argument for less time? Like, is there a, is, it sounds like any kind of real estate transaction would take a long time. And so, it doesn't sound like there's a sense of that there's a need to make a decision tonight. Is it, am I missing? No, I don't think, I, I think, or, I think or, what, or not just tonight. What but he is asking is in terms of like when we push this out for public comment already, do we want to win any of these choices and say the board is just like to make it easier for the public? Like if we've decided, for instance, that one of one or two or three of these is just kind of there's there's not enough to conclude it's viable does it make sense to go to keep them? asking the community Here's, should we do this should we do this yeah the uh, um the moving the district office here is not viable uh, i don't think that has any future i mean it can be done it's yeah. we just have but, but it, it's like <laughs> You know, for the reasons that are kind of obvious, yeah. like it's not, it doesn't make sense, any sense. So we could get rid of that one. Right. And that, that is the discussion I'm hoping to have. There might be a member of the board yeah. who disagrees with you. And I yes. would want them to yeah. voice that if they disagree with you. Okay. Well, should we just go through the options and ask if people feel it's worth soliciting further feedback? Why don't we do that? That's 
one way to go. Okay, let's let's. I think that's the quickest way to go, especially since it's it's uh, right towards nine. Um, Libby, do you want to flip back to just go through them and we can? And and if yeah, I, I I err on keeping it on if people feel they'd like to. So magnet school, do people feel that it's worth soliciting further comment about it? Red is a no. Lynn is a no. Tim is a no. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's a straw poll. We're definitely this isn't like an official yeah. board vote. So yeah. students yeah, can definitely about definitely yeah. weigh in. Okay. Yeah. Um, regional votes. Everyone who feel who wants further input on this, please raise your hand. I wouldn't rule it out, given that it seemed like a couple of superintendents had some interest in further discussion. There's one. Oh, Any two. Oh, superintendents. Yeah, yeah, one, yeah, one yeah. Board. Okay. Straw poll, um, not two official votes. You, you, you two votes. No, no, straw poll. <laughs> no, no. Sorry. Um, does, does anyone else? Tim, do you feel strongly enough about it that you would want to keep it in? Because as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I guess one I'm, board member wants more information and feel strongly about I'm it. I'm not it. looking for, I, I guess, I, this is, maybe I'm just getting confused about the process, but it seems like if we have a, a buy, I, I don't know that ruling things out is, is sort of, I don't think there's a need to go solicit more on it. I guess maybe if, with that distinction, but I don't think I'd rule anything out right now. Things change and develop, and particularly right now in a evolving education landscape. Um, I'm. It seems like there's a primary thing that's worth exploring the the option, and so this was. You know, there seemed to be some interesting possibilities here, but. Can I ask a follow-up question? Are you saying that there may be a regional a regional desire for use need for this type of program, but would it be here in this building? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah obviously. Would. That that question. I, I agree that there may be a future for this idea somewhere in the region, but do you want to see it in this building? I don't know. No. No. But that is what we are discussing, is the That's use of this building. Because yeah. one, of, one of my concerns is, you know, we can kind of sail around on all these ideas for a long time, and this community needs some certainty to know how to move forward and how to figure out what to do with this building, if in fact it is returned to the town. And when we continue to swim around, the town struggles to understand what how to make decisions, how to move forward, how to get, how to even think about how to move forward. If we're, if the town's waiting for a walkway school board that wants to explore every single possibility at an item, it hurts my town. Well, could we just select the option at this point in time? Seems, seems like the most viable and workable how to get by. And not necessarily take things off the table, but if it's top priority. I th I think that's not that wouldn't serve what Rhett was just saying, it sounds to me. Yeah. Like if if we keep saying, I think what I'm hearing Rhett say is if we keep saying all of these options are on the table and we're still considering them, that feels like waffling. Yeah, is that and, and, and I think it sends a signal mm -hmm. to the members of Roxbury that we're considering things that we're not considering. And I think it also sends a signal to some Montpelier members who might say, Oh, I love a Myron school, that'd be great. Like, I'm, I'm excited the board is considering it. When if we've decided it's you know not affordable as I think we have, then you know it's it just it. Yeah, we have to make the decision. I mean, we want the community to give input, but if, if there are things, you know, if, if there are things that, that do not seem viable to us, um, I'm not sure it's it's worth presenting that as a viable option. My vote on this is no. Yes. Are you are you okay if we take this up too, or do you feel so only good? one vote? <laughs> you two well, I mean, I I, I don't want to I don't want a board member one straw two votes. information we have to make the votes if that counts. Um, the next option, which agrees. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm, it I'm, and it, and it just sounded out. like it wasn't going to go very far. Yeah. With, with CBC. It doesn't sound like they want to do it and it's yeah. their choice. Yeah. I will say as the representative on the board, I haven't gotten any, any communication, any communication yeah. in any direction about it other than reading it in the Times Argus. And so there hasn't been a you know, wave of interest okay. said my way at least. And there have been Times Argus articles about land possible sites that seem a little more real, really moving. I think, I think we can take that one off the table. Uh, the next one, I think, is the office space. Does anybody want? Jake feels very strongly about. Yes. Yeah, I do too, because if you have a crisis at the high school, which is probably the most likely place it could happen, um, you want your superintendent available. You don't want a person 20 or 30 minutes away. Anyone feel this is something they want further information on? I think for me, I'm I'm just guided by any of these options that cost even a fraction of money. I feel like it's sort of insulting to um, the families in Roxbury where we felt like we really had to make a really challenging financial decision. And so then to like entertain really anything else that would have costs associated when we had to make that really challenging decision and then going into another budget cycle that doesn't sound any better. Feels like as much as it might be nice to like explore things, I think we're I don't think we have that luxury. So I don't think it's worth spending a lot of Anyone's time exploring things that really financially don't make sense. Very much makes some really hard decisions. It also takes the idea of any kind of community center off the table, which is the thing that we heard from this community tonight is the thing they would like the most. Yeah, it would. It would be. A, it would be an administrative building. I mean, it would be a public use in terms of that. It's where. The, the district educates the children, but it would not be a space that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the one that we, I think, are in agreement that that we do want to put out. I mean, I, I kind of to your point, Tim. I don't think there is a rush on time. I mean, I will probably get ahead of myself. I, I have very little problem keeping this building in the district for another year while we work with the town to, um, you know, to, on its future, that that seems like a pretty, I mean, obviously I'm on two votes, but I know where my two votes will land on that one. And As far as like keeping it as a line item in the budget, you're saying? Keep it as a line item and, and running it as it is now. Um, for the, yeah, year. with the uh, right, with right. The enrichment program. Yeah, I, absolutely. I don't have a problem with that either. Um, but um, I think if maybe if we could um, like think outside the box a little bit, um, you know, what if so the cost to maintain it is sixty to seventy five thousand dollars a year. So what if you offered it to the town for a dollar, but in exchange for having the after school program here. Um, we offered rent of sixty to seventy-five thousand dollars a year, so it would be in the town's possession. But we would essentially be paying for the maintenance of the building in year one. That amount could go down as the years go by. Um, the, there would be no property tax increase. It would be the same total amount as the current year. So there's no impact, but it's a transition over to the town of Roxbury that would start soon, and they would have no um, impact to their finances in year one. Yeah, you just got a question. Yeah. I think I really appreciate that because I was sort of thinking when we were hearing the presentation earlier, um, I also have no problem per se with keeping this in the budget, other than at this point I'm having nightmares about another like horrific budget season. So I hope that that is something that can happen. Um, and I hope that we don't have to end up cutting it out at the last minute. Um but it did seem like there was some interest in having this building in the ownership of the town of Roxbury so that 
it could be used more freely as a community space. And if right. that's the case, yeah. and that is also really advantageous to both the community and the education and well-being of the children, um, that is something I'm interested in as well. Because it did seem like they would have more autonomy to carry out community uses of this building if it's right. in their ownership, yeah. logically. That is true. And, and we can do a hybrid too. I mean, say for instance, it just, you know, say there's due diligence the town needs to do. We put it in our budget to maintain. We don't need the whole year. We need say six months. And then we just, you know, use that budgeted money and we pay rent for part of the program for you know, the remainder of the year. So we, we have a six month lease for, you know, 30, 35,000. You know, it transfers to the town. And then at the end of the year, we continue with whatever arrangement kind of makes sense. We, we should be clear. We're all just brainstorming. Yeah, this is all this conjecture. is still yes. very hypothetical, but yes. it's the kinds of th yes. kind of thinking that we're looking yeah. to the board to do. What are the what are the ways to make something work for the community yeah. that um, clearly has said yeah. this is yeah. a wonderful space to be the heart of the community yeah because yeah. we definitely heard you know there are you know there there are some things that the district is doing right now that i think is really benefiting the, the, but i'm also hearing that there are some things that the town would like to do the building that the district's ownership is you know, creating like turning on the stove and, and being able to cook here you know? yeah that um i really appreciate that a wonderful suggestion, Jake. Um, not necessarily that that's necessarily the way it would go, but it does bring up the question about insurance and liability and how that works and how that might look. And so those are just those are just questions that I would hope that whomever could help us get some ideas about um, to really sort of flesh it out. Um, because I think that having as much, you know, as much uh, clarity about Things like liability and safety and how that all plays out, um, I think would, would would be maybe a question for Libby to bring to the legal team or the business officer or whoever is um, is could help her. Like similar to when we asked questions at the beginning of the process and she came to us with a number of answers. Like if we can refine some of these possibilities, we might revisit the question aspect of our process. Which I was really, I really appreciate that we, we had a process and we're still in it. But yes. as we narrow in on ideas, it does it does create opportunities for new questions and um, good I point. Think that will help us. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, you know, it sounds like the town is working with a GB or GR architecture for the town planning. Um, they might have insight into insurance costs and stuff like that. Yeah, we're just starting. They uh, did a tour of the village center and they were very excited about the possibilities for this space and the open green space. So we haven't got feedback from them yet, but many of folks, these guys, that's what they envision future uses of spaces. That's awesome. Yeah. But not more than status, you know, we really can't go forward and make proposals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the I think the important thing is to kind of get a common vision of you know what what the town really wants and, and what makes sense for the district, um, and then to get some lawyers involved and <laughs> make sure we do it in a way that you know. Um, Just as, as an individual, yeah. so it sounds like this is still on the table. And it sounds like a new proposal is renting. Well, so I think that's something that we're going to do. Yeah, I don't know if that's a new proposal. I, I think that's kind of part of, part you of know, this is a possible use for some sort of period with, you know, the idea of, you know, continuing this with a transference to the town um, and figuring out what that looks like. It is, yeah, seems to be, Option. So, ben, this is a very quick comment on Jake's statement. I actually should I go up here so people can hear me. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, Thank very, you, Ben. Very, very quick. Just um, 
you know, I, in my understanding, I, 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 you know, one of the challenges of envisioning the future of um, this building is the fact that because Roxbury doesn't have ownership of it, your suggestion, in my understanding, kind of solves that quandary of giving one more year, but giving us more immediate control over the reins to make decisions. And knowing that we have a financial buffer uh, to subsidize the maintenance rate, but at the very least be subsidized is amazing. I mean, I think that sounds really wonderful. And it might satisfy the disparate opinions of one person saying we want the building right back and maybe the majority of people wanting to wait one year. So I just want to say I really appreciate that idea personally. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, and again, like yeah, you know, some of these ideas are new, some of them might, yeah. You, know, you know, I think we'd have to investigate how the transfer would, would actually take place, but um, yeah, and and we may learn some things, but you know, I, I think it's good to um, good good to throw ideas out there in the group. James Santi, I want to say something on the good side. After all, my vision moment. Um, the gutter on this building, um, whoever set them up, um, you probably don't even need gutters, so Twombly says anyway. But what they done was they put the gutter downspout from the town hall into the top of the gutter in the intermediate building. And it seemed to work on the south side because there's sun in the back side. I assume when they were both trying to get out the door at the same time, that froze and bent the gutter. And even in the light rain, it went over the gutter and there's a little pile of stone where it wore away the grass. Anyhow, to make a long story short, not only did they separate the downspouts, they put larger downspouts on the town hall. So I talked to Mr. LaRose and told him that when I need a vendor, I will call him because he's got good vendors. So the point is, after all my bitching and moaning, you are taking care of the building. And it means a lot to me to keep this building. I was worried that there was going to be a blockage and it was going to bleed up into the roof. And, and, you know, I mean, I was here when we restored this building. I lived here then. So thank you. Yeah. Andrew, Andrew does take good care of things. So it seems like we have consensus to put this out for further comment, and we may get more mm -hmm. good ideas around this. Does that mean it will be added on to this specific presentation? And similar to Libby, do you think it, that the that any of the these sort of um, variations of the community use and with the transfer or um, the, the, the just the after school program will go into the, that will remove the first four slides or whatever and add in a slide that says this that says that and um, you know the we keep it and we keep the after school program another option it goes to Roxbury but we keep the after school program and pay rent that that will actually go into the presentation and then it will be promoted to Montpelier as well because there's a lot of nuance here that's certainly not in the presentation that I think Montpelier has a right to see and yeah. to be able to respond to um, as well as Roxbury because we're we're making some progress here and if we really want to be efficient, yeah. I would like the information to be as transparent as possible. If I can just say what I, to answer that question, Rhett, what I think makes the most sense is to say the board is still deciding whether or not we have an educational use, which means then we get to hold on to the building, right? Which is, and the one educational use we're still thinking about and considering is a district run community center. So that would be one option to go to the, to, for us to say to the broader community, is that, is that what you'd like to see done? Another option is we just say, actually, it makes much more sense. We don't, we, there might be a community or an educational use, but we think it makes much more sense to sell the building to the town for a dollar. So we could present it as just the two options, but what I hear you asking is, could we also have a third in there that is not the robust community center that is on the slide, but the more pared down version that we have right now, we probably wouldn't call it a community center, but just 
maintain ownership of the building and run an after school program out of it? Are you saying you would the, the what we, well, we would be soliciting public comment on is those three options? Yeah, and that would be a finite arrangement. Well, whether the district owns it and it continues the after school or the district district sells it to Roxbury and maintains the after school. If the district owns it, I think it should, I would think it would be a finite. There was some talk in the, in I, whatever. I mean, I don't know, but there, there are kind of three options that we could get some feedback on it because I mean, we did hear people say, keep it indefinitely and keep running the after school program indefinitely. Great. That, that that's where we'll go, but that is, it is certainly a, it's an option. Possibility, I guess. If that seems like. I would agree. I was surprised yeah. it wasn't on there because it, it's not a high cost and it seems like it's clearly a positive current actively used educational use. So that should definitely be one of the things to consider. Yeah. Sorry, but I'm not, having just gone through the process of school closure. I like the idea of continuing the after use, but I feel like that needs to be paired up with some sort of transition plan. Next year, the budget falls in hard, and the uh, voters in the district decide to fill the after school program in Oxford so that we're not starting from ground zero. So, well, right now, right now, all we're doing is putting out options to get public comment yeah. on. Yeah, and it's a good educational use until the day that the voters decide that. To be in a position to transition it should that get voted down in the future budget. Sort of what's going on from now. Right. So that we don't start our transition yeah. now over. And, and I guess the thing is if um, I think maybe for clarity for popular voters, if we you know, one of the options is going to be to have a draft route back to the town. I think we might want to put that this might entail, you know, further operation of ownership of the district for a period of time to allow that transition to occur. So people don't. They don't think it's going to happen. Like imminent. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. That's what folks want. Right. That's a different option. That's one of the three on here is maintain where we're at right now. Just maintain it for right without an end date. Okay. So that's what we'll start to solicit more uh, broader public comment on. Yeah. And we can we can talk a little bit tomorrow about how make sure that gets out kind of broadly and all the notices how many people are. Our and front porch forum, forum and forum. social media. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Will there be another meeting here? Uh, every fourth. Every fourth. So I'm not sure yeah. what that is. Yeah. So eight weeks. Least, yeah. End of, end of no. Early December. December yeah. Early December. Uh, all right, anything else before we wrap up the bundle do orders of business? Just ask for clarity. You say that you reiterate the, the three options. So. You know what? Why don't, do you want to tell me what you heard? Because then that will help us understand if we've actually said it well enough. Um, I don't know if I can do that. That's okay. But okay, I'll try. I mean, so maintaining the um sort of the status quo current use that um the district owns the building the after school program is part of that and that's part of what i'm listening for mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. and, and like having an own thoughts about is that that means that like as kind of mike said like that means that um sort of like the building and the after school program kind of get stuck together as like the commitment of the overall budget to the Roxbury students. Um, so that's one option. Another option is exploring um, like a one year or some kind of a transition time where 
the school dress school district um, covers the cost of maintaining the building. And part of what I'm listening for is I'm not so that would be like the building and the after school program or just the building. So that's one of my point of clarification about that option. Um, and you know, maybe for six months or a year or two years, we don't know, but like a time limited commitment. Right. Obviously we can only make a commitment in the budget here, but so we have to um, and then I really don't think I need to, I mean, I guess the third option is, is offering it back to the town, which then has two options, which at least two options, which is offering it back to the town. You know, we vote on this in March or meaning it's like not in the budget, which is what many people have feared. Um, or, you know, as folks have asked, you know, you know maybe that's next year. So that's what I heard. Yeah. No, I'm really <laughs> glad. Heard that. Thank you, it. Heather. Thank you. That that's not exactly it. So thank okay. you for <laughs> I had a feeling. Yeah. But you asked. Yeah. Yes. Good. <laughs> that's why I asked. So the three that's options, right. let's the three options that we'll put out to public comment. And so not for us to make a decision on right now, but to put out to public comment is the fifth one that was on those slides there, which is like the Montpelier Roxbury okay. Community Center. We own it, we decide what community center functions happen here. And that is, you know, for as long as we want to do it, you know, can do it for. So that's option one. Option two is to maintain current use of the building as in MRPS ownership and after school program for, again, for just as long as we can continue to pay for it. And then the third option is we decide to sell it to the town for a dollar. And then within that, what I've heard from board members is because we know that that process takes time, we would build in money into the FY26 budget to cover the maintenance costs, et cetera. And, per, and perhaps then another decision would be whether or not we would cover the cost of an after school program here in the during that transition period of selling it to the town. So those are the, the three options, but, but just for the sake of clarity for like, for the public to be able to weigh in, I think we're just saying like a third option is the district does what fulfills the merger agreement of selling it to the town for a dollar rather than holding on to it um, as an educational use of the building. Did that? help yeah. yeah okay good i'm very glad we did that yeah, yeah thank you I, for asking yeah i think we confuse that one because we, we don't want we don't want people to think that that if we do the third choice that that means that it's going to happen instantly and be upset or surprised if you know, there's a time where we're continuing to you know run the building and, and spend money on the building. yeah and just to reiterate Red's point earlier, the after school enrichment is not just about it being in the budget, but about also it being able to be staffed. Yeah. So that, which is not going to be in public comment <laughs> because that's not what we're asking the public to comment on. It's um, the, we're asking the public to comment on what our, should our decision be, but also in the interest of not over promising something we can't deliver on. That is a factor. Yeah, no, that's very true. Because that, yeah, yeah, if, if, it's hard to staff. It's, it's hard, hard to staff, staff, and there are practical considerations. And, yeah, so in the beginning, could we have leased the building and never sold it? Would that have been an option? Is that for the merger? Yeah. Um, I guess I was possibly, but... you didn't know what you were talking about. No, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I, know. I, I guess it's probably yes, but. Uh, uh, water, I think water long, long, long sense on the bridge. Yeah, yeah, it's just curious. So at this point, and with all with all these options, recognizing that there's always staffing issues, I think it's pretty clear that we're budgeting and planning for at minimum the aftercare program here in 26. That's, I, I think that's that's basic, right? And maintaining I, it. I would say yes. Y yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I think so. Do yeah. I was just going to say, depending on what we hear back on public comment, but I think the sure, answer to that is, is yes, because it's, I think the after school is, is uh, assumed in all three of in the options. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah. I, it's quite, 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 quite. Yeah. 
Um, it's too late to tell people what the consent agenda is. Do we have a motion for the consent agenda? Second. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Any discussion or questions? Just to say thanks for all the yeah, stuff in, in the uh, in the superintendent's report and the roots and wings. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Also, I'll commend everyone to our finance committee meeting. Jake gave a great presentation on education finance generally. You should all look at it. It's really good. It's very right. cool. Is it in the minutes? Oh, it's in the There's minute. a link to it in, in, in our the public minutes. Document. Oh, good. Actually, thanks. I don't know if they got it in this public. Uh, if not, anyway. I found them in the public. Okay. Look at it. It's yeah. a really good presentation. It helps. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, um, everyone. Thank right. you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, policy monitoring reports uh, C1, B2, F4, educational records, volunteers' uh, work. Sure. I think you're ready to bring me peace to me. Ah, thank you. I you know, yeah. no, we appreciate it. No, thanks for your thanks for comments. Okay. Thanks, Dave. I move we accept the policy monitoring report. Second. Uh, any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion to adjourn? Summer. Aye. 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 Aye.